the constitution of india preamble we the people of india having solemnly resolved to constitute india into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice social economic and political liberty of thought expression belief faith and worship equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation in our constituent assembly this 26th day of november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution happy morning students i first want to congratulate all the students for successfully completing your online exam see i got the feedback from the teachers and they are very happy that uh, though we are not seeing each other in spite of uh, listening to virtual classes um, children you have really done well you have done your maximum but there are few things that you should take uh, into consideration the subject teachers every concerned subject teacher will be letting you know about that personally and overall impression i think you all have done very well children okay so uh, once again i want to congratulate everyone keep up uh, the spirit always keep continuing this be energetic whether somebody is monitoring us or not we have to follow a proper system of continuing with our academics okay uh, that is work while you work play while you play so that is the most important thing we should remember so last class we were seeing about the periodicity in property that is classification of elements i just started with a chapter so this class we are going to focus on electronic configuration and also we are going to learn about spdf block elements see electronic configuration before getting into this in 10th standard we have started learning about we have four main shells that is the principal k l m n and each shell was having sub shells s p d and f each sub shell was having the orbitals and in each orbital there were electrons which were getting into it so we were learning how to write the electronic configuration according to f boss principle pauli's exclusion principle and also what was the other one children hun's rule of maximum multiplicity so here in electronic configuration we know whenever s and p were coming it was 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 but after 3p we don't write 3d instead we write 4s because the moment the calcium and potassium potassium and calcium are coming 3d is having less and uh, more energy than 4s so 4s will come first then comes 3d so whenever the 3d starts getting filled up with electrons we know in d sub shell maximum 10 electrons can be accommodated so whenever 3d comes it is the d block element so 3d and 4d the transition series starts in that the electrons get filled from 3d1 to 3d10 but we also know that after the transition we have something which is called as inner transition series which is kept inside the periodic table not just hiding something which is inside those are 4f and 5f where f sub shell can take maximum 14 electrons so in that case it will be lanthanoids for 4f and actinoids for 5f this is what is the basic of electronic configuration now when are we are talking about blocks we have a whole system called periodic table in periodic table there are primarily four blocks s p d and f s and p block are the main blocks or we also call them as representative elements and d block lies between s and p so it's called as transition elements and f are called as inner transition elements now when we talk about s block s block primarily consists of two groups 
you will be seeing the periodic table in your textbook in a periodic table s block comes in the left corner of the periodic table there are two main groups the first group are called as alkali metals what they are called as alkali metals and you write it as ns1 n is the principal energy level whichever is the main shell it belongs to the s sub shell and with one electron present in the outermost shell in group 2 they are called as alkaline earth metals so it will be ns2 so maximum the outermost will be ns1 and ns2 because first group we find out in 10th standard we were having a rule to find out the group the number of electrons so it one electrons first group it has two electrons so it belongs to second group so group 1 are called as alkali metals group 2 are called as alkaline earth metals now these metals they have good reactivity and they have very low ionization energy what do you mean by ionization energy i told you we have a nucleus and we have the shells like this now the electron present in the outermost shell if it is far away from the nucleus it will have very less attraction towards the nucleus so very less attraction which means it needs very less energy to remove the electron as the definition of ionization energy says the energy required to remove the loosely bounded electron from an isolated gaseous atom loosely bounded means something which is not getting attracted to the nucleus strongly so an electron which is far away from the nucleus can easily be removed with less energy so overall s block elements have low ionization energy especially when we go down the group now the first group elements they lose electron how many electron they lose all the group 1 element lose one electron to become plus one oxidation state that is to become a cation when i say sodium becomes na plus potassium becomes k plus so all these group 1 elements lose one electron to become plus one oxidation state now group 2 elements will lose two electron to become plus two oxidation state like i i can say calcium barium ca2 plus ba2 plus so where they lose two electrons to beta plus two oxidation state now all the elements are metals x and they are ionic in nature we know what is ionic that is losing electron or forming ionic bond what is ionic bond transfer of electrons takes place so except lithium and beryllium all the elements are ionic we will be studying about this lithium and beryllium which shows an exceptional behavior from the other elements belonging to the same group so except lithium and beryllium all the elements are ionic in nature and their metallic character and reactivity increases when we go down the group so when we go down the group what happens the met they become more 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 and metallic and their reactivity also increases how can you say the reactivity increases it is just because if i can if it can lose an electron easily definitely it is reactive if it is not allowing to remove the electron or to gain a electron it becomes inert so what is the meaning of reactivity it should react with other elements how can it react either by losing or gaining electrons but we know group 1 and 2 ele group elements will definitely lose electron to become plus 1 and plus 2 oxidation state so this is what is with respect to s block elements now we shall learn about p block elements now we shall learn about p block elements in p block elements it starts from group 13 to group 18 i told you first and second group are s block elements and in p block they are in the right extreme of the periodic table that is they start from 13th group to 18th group 13 14 15 16 17 18 total six groups comes under p block so the configuration will be ns2 np1 and ns2 np6 where the electrons get added in the p sub shell 
and we know p sub shell can take maximum 6 electrons so from group 13 p1 group 14 p2 group 15 p3 group 16 p4 group 17 p5 and group 18 p6 in this ns2 np6 that is the 18th group are called as noble gas or inert gas that is they have a stable configuration which means they are subshells or their orbitals are completely filled it has a completely filled configuration which we also called as stable configuration they become inert that is chemically inactive they do not react so which means 18th group elements have low chemical reactivity since their electrons are completely filled in the orbitals they neither lose electron nor accept electron so they have very low chemical reactivity if you come to group 17 they are called as halogens that is chlorine bromine fluorine iodine they are called as halogens and they ha have a very high electronegativity which means they just need one electron to become octet you know the 17th group elements they have minus one as their valency that is they need only one electron to become octet and also they have a very high electron gain enthalpy that is tendency to gain electron is more when you come to group 16 having minus 2 as oxidation state they are called as chalcogens and they also have a very high electronegativity and electron gain enthalpy these are oxygen sulfur you know that group so they have two electrons requirement so they accept the two electrons to become octet now these are with the p block elements and if you see in p block the metallic character actually increases down the group and you can find metals non-metals metalloids in the p block elements like silicon germanium they all are metalloids semiconductors and if you see their non-metallic character it increases across the period that is from 13th group to 18th group the metal slowly turn to become a non-metal this is the trend with p block now we'll get back into d block d block is placed in such a way that if you see your textbook diagram d block is placed here this is my s block this is my p block this is my d block that is for one group 2 here group 13 to 18 so the middle part that is from group 3 to 12 they are called as d block elements and the electrons get filled in the inner d orbitals so that's why they are called as d block elements or i can say transition elements because they form a transition between s and the p block and they have a configuration of ns n minus 1 d 1 to 10 ns 0 to 2 this is the configuration okay so then they are metals they have variable oxidation state they form colored compounds they act as catalyst this is all we have learnt in 10 standard children you remember using of iron as catalyst colored compounds we have seen with manganese um, the uh, manganese what is potassium permanganate we have seen we have seen with cobalt pink color you remember children and then variable oxidation state fe2 plus fe3 plus co2 plus co3 plus chromium again with 2 plus and 3 plus then all these are metals that's why they lose electrons and we know they are they form variable oxidation state is just because along with the s subshell the inner d subshell also take part in the chemical reaction because the energy difference between d and s is very low so both of them take part in the chemical reaction that's why they have different oxidation state and if you see the transition rows three rows out of which zinc cadmium and mercury they have no properties related to d block it is just because they are d subshell that is they have d10 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 electrons since the d subshell is completely filled they never take part in the chemical reaction that's why you could hardly see and they are called as they are little bit exception when compared to the other transition elements of the d block now we'll learn about f block f block elements they are called as inner transition elements and if you see we have 4f and 5f i previously told you they are called as lanthanoids and actinoids 
lanthanoids starts from atomic number 58 and completes at 71 actinoids starts at 9090 and stops at 103 apart from lanthanoids and actinoids the elements after uranium we call them as transuranium elements now what is the configuration we have n minus 2 f 1 to 14 n minus 1 d 1 to 10 n s 2 the configuration of d and f has been asked in the board exam twice so learn the configuration it comes in one mark question give the electronic configuration of f block elements now if you see the property they are called as metals or they behave as metals they have different oxidation state because of the participation of all the df subshells that is the electrons present in it they are radioactive especially in actinoids if you see they have radioactive elements and they are all other after uranium they are called as transuranium elements so these are the main thing the if you see the actinoids elements have not been studied the chemistry behind actinoid elements have not been done a good research and you see these have got wide application in nuclear reactors that is in nuclear chemistry now after completing this spdf something that we should know about the elements present in them are whether they are metals they are non-metals or they are called as metalloids so first we will see what are metals if you see the 78 percent of the elements belonging to the left side of the periodic table are metals and these metals they are always solid at room temperature but we have an exception that is mercury as we all know mercury is a liquid metal that's why it has wide application in thermometer if you see it is kept at the bottom so that it can show an increase it expands right it expands when it is heated that's why it is a liquid metal and if you see all the metals have high melting and boiling point in that we have exception with cesium and gallium gallium most behave as metalloid that is more of a metal and a non-metal and cesium also and that's why they have a low melting point they behave as good conductors that is they allow the heat and the electricity to pass through them that's why they are called as good conductors that's why we know copper wires or aluminium wires have been used or the utensils that we use are made of stainless steel or i mean alloy or you can also use copper vessels that is they are can allow the heat to pass through them and also the electricity they are malleable which means they can be drawn into sheets thin sheets and they are ductile which means they can be made into wires that is you can make it as a wire that's how this copper or aluminium wires have been used so these are the main properties of metals now we'll get back into non-metals and metalloids non-metals they are actually solids and gases at room temperature that is at exactly room temperature they behave as solids and gases they have a very low melting point and boiling point not like metals and we have an exception here with boron and carbon they are poor conductors of heat and electricity as we know they do not conduct heat and electricity they do not allow the heat and electricity to pass through them so they are also called as insulators they are brittle in nature that is very hard not like uh, you can make them into sheets and uh, wires that is the malleability and ductility they don't show those property they are brittle in nature and this non-metallic character increases from left to right as we move the in the periodic table horizontally from left to right their non-metallic character actually increases now what are metalloids metalloids they are also called as semi-metals which means they have a partial character of metals and also that of a non-metals so they behave as a metalloids example you have silicon germanium arsenic antimony tellurium these are the elements which behave as metalloids now with this we are completing this metals non-metals and everything now why do we study this periodic table we know there are main four groups in the periodic table to study about the configuration and the elements inside them there are some physical and chemical properties which you should learn as we are not learning about chemical we should be knowing certain physical properties which play a major role in the trend of the periodic table now in that we'll be starting with atomic radius 
Now we know an atom is very small. To find the radius of an atom is not that easy and practically it is not applicable to get the radius of an atom. So there were separate, separate methods like X-ray methods, spectroscopical methods to find out the atomic radius. Atomic radius can be broadly classified into two types. We have covalent radius and metallic radius. Now the distance between the atom and the combined state, when one chlorine is present and one more chlorine is present, when they join together, the distance between them gives the covalent radius. Or I can say, when two metals, when they combine, now this is, will be the internuclear distance between the two cores of the atom. So covalent radius means the distance between the atom and the combined state and metallic radius is half the internuclear distance separating the metallic core. Metallic core means the center of the metal half. Example I will say if copper is having an, a distance of 256 picometer, half the internuclear distance will be 256 by 2 which is 128 and that will be the atomic radius. So whatever distance that you get, when you divide by 2 you will get because we know radius is nothing but the distance between the electron and the nucleus. But since we know the electron keeps on rotating or it is not stationary, we also learnt in Heisenberg's principle, it is not possible to determine simultaneously the momentum and the position. Same way, it is difficult in that manner. So we get the distance and when we divide by 2, we get the atomic radius. Atomic radius is the same as covalent radius and metallic radius. So this is atomic radius. Now what happens as we go down the group or when we go across the period? I will be showing you an example where you can see what happens to this atomic radius. See when we go down the group what happens? This is my nucleus, right? 1, 2, 3. My number of shells actually is getting increased. 1, 2, 3, 4. But what happens when, they, when I go like this? It is in the same only the number of when I go across the period the number of shells is remaining the same but only the electrons get added only the electrons are getting added but what happens when we go down the group the number of shells increases so as the number of shells increases the distance between the electron and the uh, nucleus also increases so as the electron and the nuclear distance increases, I can say the atomic radius also increases. But that does not happen when I go across the period. When I go across the period, the shells remains the same, only the electrons gets added. The number of get electrons gets added. So when the number of get electrons gets added, electrons being negatively charged, nucleus being positively charged, there will be an attraction of this outermost electron towards the nucleus. So I can say the size will shrink. So that's why we say atomic radii decreases when I go across the period and increases when I go down the group. So what happens across the period atomic radius decreases, down the group atomic radius increases. So with this we will stop the class for today. I hope you are able to understand. The next class we will be learning about more and more that is we have ionic radius, ionization enthalpy, electronegativity, electron gain enthalpy and exceptional behavior. This is a very small chapter full of theory which you can easily understand and write. If possible, I will try to put some videos in between for your better understanding. Okay children, thank you so much. Take care, stay home, stay safe. Bye. We are going to see the periodic table constituting 7 periods and 18 groups. So we will be seeing the periodic table with respect to the outer shell electronic configuration. So here we have the electronic configuration which is the main principle of arranging the elements in different groups. 
see you have groups 1 to 18 with electronic configuration written. So the outermost electronic configuration will be responsible for arranging the similar elements in similar groups. We have four main blocks S, P, D and F with respective electronic configuration. So now we will learn about S block which has first and the second group. Here the first group elements are called as alkali metals and the second group elements are called alkaline earth metals. The properties of S block elements they are soft metals with low melting and boiling point, low ionization enthalpy, highly reactive form ionic compounds highly electropositive and impart color to the flame. So now we will learn about the six groups right from 13 to 18 which are called as P block elements or the representative elements. The electronic configuration NS2 NP1 to 6. In P block elements, the 16th and 17th group elements are called as calcogens and halogens. And the 18th group element are called as noble gas as the outermost electronic configuration is octet and they have completely filled stable configuration. Properties, they are highly negative, electron gain enthalpies mostly form covalent compounds more than one atoms. Oxidation states are also possible. We have the D block elements which constitute of third group to the twelfth group. So, ten groups are present with the general electronic configuration NS1 to 2, N minus 1, D1 to 10. Properties of D block elements are more than one oxidation state, ionic covalent and coordination compounds and they have international interstitial compounds are also formed. They have high melting point and they form good conductors of heat and electricity. We have the F block elements which are called as lanthanides and actinides and the general electronic configuration you can see on the screen. Properties of F block elements again they are metallic in nature, high melting point, they are mostly colored and form variable oxidation states. Now let us analyze the trend of the atomic size or electronic configuration across the period. The first element of you can see with NS1 and the last element being NS2 in the first period and second one being NS1 and NS2 NP6 where n is the principal energy level. So for the first period number it starts from 1s and ends at 1s with the first element 1s1 that is hydrogen and the last element 1s2 with helium. So we have two elements in the first period and the second period starts from 2s and ends at 2p with eight elements that is starting from lithium till neon. In the third period we have a 3s till 3p again we have 8 elements starting from sodium and ending till argon. Coming to the fourth period it starts from 4s continues till 3d and then stops at 4p constituting 18 elements. According to Afba's principal energy level 4s is being less than that of 3d so 4s, 3d and 4p. So 18 elements with potassium and ending till krypton. So these elements starting from scandium and ending till zinc forms the D block element which are called as the first transition series. In the fifth period we start from 5s, 4d and 5p again constituting 18 elements which is the second set of transition elements with yttrium and ending till cadmium, the second transition series of D block elements and again which is followed by the third and the fourth transition series of the D block elements consequently. So this general electronic configuration along the sixth period starts from 6s, 4f, 
5D and 4P constituting 32 elements along the row which are again included as the f lock elements with lanthanide and the first inner transition series and then called as actinides which follows up the second inner transition series. So you can see lanthanides and actinides being placed in the F block elements which are the inner transition series also called as transuranium elements. Some of the facts used in the atomic spectra interpretation and also Niel Bohr was the first person to discover the electronic structure of the atom. So now children let's summarize all that we have learned today.